And uh, today is a special broadcast for the wolf campers out there who have heard tall tales of the chickens of Blue Sky Farm that Kim loves so much. Uh, you're going to meet uh, Moonbeam, Josephine, Junebug, Cassiopeia, Carolina. They're the sole survivors of various avian ailments that afflict laying hens, right? Mm -hmm. um, here with the results of 20 necropsies on the other um, <laughs> chickens have revealed and learn how Kim has protected them from pre predators all these years. We have not lost one to a predator mm -hmm. while also letting them free range to fertilize our gardens, which are right behind you. And... Um, we'll end with the song You've Got a Friend in Me, Kim. Special request uh, from Kim about her chickens, a song by Randy Newman. And we um, want to advise you to do a lot of research before getting chickens. Kim will talk about what uh, she recommends, but they can be very time consuming and expensive, in my opinion, whether or not you protect <laughs> them from predators and disease or whether you think of them as pets or food. Uh, otherwise, stick with gardening and trade your services for eggs and meat with farms in the area if you don't want to really take care of your chickens um, with enough time and energy. Or choose other outside activities <laughs> to ensure your daily balance of UV exposure for vitamin D. We're getting a little bit right now with the sun break. Um, of course, it's better for dispersing viruses and uh, it's good for your exercise and mental health. And um, now, um, if you have time, as I mention every day, do a PPE drive for your local medical personnel during this time. And if you have money, spend it on your small businesses. Like ours, uh, there's a donation link on there to help us keep uh, our administrative uh, staff employed uh, this spring until summer camp starts. Now, I'll turn it over to Kim, and I'll work on the YouTube in case we can get that going. Okay. It's all you. Sounds good. And let me know if you want me to move the camera. Yeah, down. or you can remind me of things. So, okay. no, this, this works out fine. I said this one's cutting off my head. Oh, okay. I'll turn it out. I'll, have to Whoop. I'll do get a back behind burner it. here. <laughs> anyway, so this is Carolina, and she is a blue laced red Wyandotte. And interestingly, this particular breed doesn't breed true. Um, what it's supposed to do, no, Josephine. What it's supposed to do is that they're supposed to have this nice brownish color, and then the black margins that you see on Carol here are actually supposed to be like a beautiful um, blue-gray color. It looks like they're all coming on walkabout. But Carol's my most shy chicken, so I figured I'd start with her because she's not going to let me catch her later. So I'm going to put her back in. Off you go, sweetie. Oh, we've got a bunch of walkabouts. So. All right. <clears throat> So let's start out talking about, well, I guess what I'm wearing. So this beautiful pink bathrobe is standard chicken keeper attire. Highly recommend. It's actually the best thing ever because when it's super cold out, you just throw in your nice warm bathrobe and you can go out and you can hold all the chickens you want. And if they have poopy feet, it doesn't really matter if they get on your bathrobe because you just throw it in the laundry and wash it and it's great. I actually have three of the exact same bathrobe. And it's great because when staff comes and they help me out with my chickens, they get to wear a bathrobe too. And you know, I know they love of that. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's start out talking chicks. So now is springtime and everybody is getting super psyched about getting little baby chickies because they are so, so cute, which is true, but they turn out to be these big dinosaurs that can actually peck you in the face, in the eye. And this little girl right here is the second chicken to have pecked me in the eye. And you'll notice when I'm holding her, I keep my face behind her face because if I put my face in front of her face like this where her beak is facing me just like that if her beak is facing you just like that she can peck you in the eye and if you think you can blink fast enough to block that let me tell you you're wrong and it hurts so bad it's like somebody sprinkled gravel in your eyeball and you've been cutting the worst onion you've ever cut in your life all at once um, fortunately I healed up I do have a little bit of a blurry spot kind of off-center but that's okay I didn't lose the eyeball so that's good so anyway they start out super cute as chicks you can get them from a local farm you can get them online all sorts of different places oh hi Lexi <laughs> figures watching the chickens <laughs> anyway super cute and a lot of people get them in springtime so note to the savvy chicken purchaser if you're going to purchase chickens whether you want eggs or you want um, I don't know just manure or companionship I suppose some people like meat um, you want to make sure to try unless you're in a place that can have roosters to get pullets make sure that you get the pullets or female chicks guaranteed female chicks because if you get what's called straight run 
you got a 50-50 chance and you know you get 10 chicks and it could even be seven boys and three girls and then what are you gonna do with seven boys well if you're me you're gonna love them up absolutely uh, but a lot of people unfortunately they dump the boys and they'll dump them in local parks where they get killed by dogs and predators it's really really sad because that's the only reason they die is because they're male um, very uncool and um, so take responsibility for the lives that you are um, being entrusted with. Um, it is your responsibility to take good care of them. So um, a lot of people are getting chicks nowadays, now that it's spring and now that we've got the coronavirus going on because people want to have um, some extra food around. So just know that when you start out with a little baby chick, you got to do a whole lot to keep them safe and healthy until they get to be egg laying age, which takes several months. So as long as you don't mind waiting, that's great. And you know what? You can actually go to your local um, shelter. A lot of places have chickens that you can rescue. There are some people that rescue them from um, like uh, battery cages or bad situations, all sorts of things like that. So it's great to rescue them. And if you're a person who might be um, fond of or kind to the roosters, oh, Pam, hi, um, then uh, you can always start a bachelor flock, which would be really cool. Unless you had neighbors next door, they might not like it. But when I started out with my chickens, I ended up getting just a little batch at the beginning. We went to a local farm and um, we got our first chickens and I brought them here and I fell in love with them completely. On the way to get them, Chris said, well, you know, we're going to eat a couple of these. And, and um, he said, we can name a few and then we'll keep those and I know you're going to love them and that's okay. But guess what? I named them all and I loved them all. And as it turned out, two of those chicks were roosters. I kept one of them. Unfortunately, he ended up being the mean one, but that's okay. It was Mr. Sunshine. Absolutely loves him. Hi, everybody. Yeah, um, it's trying to reconnect, but it's oh, it is? a little oh, too okay. far. Anyway, um, and I rehomed one of them to his own flock of 40 hens, and he ended up being super sweet and wonderful. Um, but in order to keep him, we had to do a few things. So the coop that you see behind me, this is it. Um, it has two inches of insulation throughout the entire thing. Floor, walls, <laughs> ceiling, and we would put him in in a cage which you might be able to see in the background I'm not quite sure if you can see it but um, every night so that in the morning when the Sun rose or whenever he felt like starting to sing he didn't wake up all the neighbors so um, we didn't really have any problems with that worked out really really great and it just shows you that if you put your mind to it there are ways to keep them safe and actually there's a really famous rooster online his name's P Blizzard and he's really cool and they actually have him as a house rooster can you imagine waking up every morning to this little rooster coming in and pecking around and singing for you it'd be so great so anyway it's a long journey going from chick to these big beautiful adults and this is Josephine she's a buff Orpington um, and you might notice something interesting about Josie I don't know if you can tell but her feet are super super big and that is because we've taken her to the vet I've taken her to the vet um, at least three times she's had a ton of different tests done because we didn't know what was going on with it and it turns out that she has um, it's something it's a fluid that's called synovial fluid and there's a leak on both of her feet somehow so the synovial fluid will leak out in between um, the flesh of her foot and her skin and cause her to swell but keep in mind every single one of those vet visits and all those tests cost money so if you decide to commit to having something um, basically for maybe even 10 years hopefully longer than that um, you are responsible for the health of that creature um, and so you just have to take care of them unless of course you're here to eat them and if you are um, that's your own thing and I don't eat any of mine I'm a vegetarian and actually the reason that I am a vegetarian is because I found out about these beautiful ladies and how wonderful they are and what personalities they have so I'm gonna put Josie down and show you my next beautiful lady this is Moonbeam she's actually my oldest girl she is nine nine years old and she still lays which is really great um, and the others are eight? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yep, okay. eight and a half. Yeah, in two different batches. So um, a lot of things that you have to think about. So when you get chicks, if you order them online, you can get them vaccinated for various diseases, which is great. So my second batch of chicks that came from online, super cool because you go into the post office one morning and you hear all this beep, 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 beep in the back. And then you get this little box and you bring it home and you open it up and oh, chicks. So amazing. So 
um, they've flown more than a lot of people. Oh, look, you can see right here how the bathrobe is really perfect for oh. these poopy toes. <laughs> and chicken poo is really stinky, unfortunately. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Beamer. Have you talked chicken diapers if they take them in the house? No, uh, no. no I imagine people are. Well, yeah. So Let's there's a lot of different possibilities. Yeah, there's chicken <laughs> diapers. Somebody actually makes a saddle that goes on their back that protects them from when the roosters mount them. And you can even get eyeballs put onto the back of the saddle and they say that it helps if there's hawks flying them over and they see the eyes on there that it may protect them a little bit more but anyway speaking of hawks flying over yes can i show everybody our garden and how sure. we normally net over the top of it during sure. the winter and so i'm going to turn the cameras <clears throat> this direction no i don't think it's closed it's working but you can see that the chickens like right four minutes and 43 seconds oh yeah we'll see anyways here you can see the chickens free ranging in our garden now we've kept them out of here for the last um, month and a half because you don't want your chickens in your garden for how, how long before um, they should... Oh, you want them out for a couple of months so that it lets all the all of their um, manure uh, process through the system. Okay. Yeah, because their manure is a little bit harder on um, your vegetables. You want to plant your vegetables straight into, you know, non-composted chicken manure. Okay, so um, we keep this netted over the top when they're out here free ranging for from what do we do it from November, December, January, and February sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that keeps the um, hawks from coming down on the chickens. And um, when we show you over here how to keep all the rest of the predators out. Oh, you're well, gonna love get it. To that. Yeah. yeah. Do you need to still introduce some of the other chickens first? They're all out there. Okay. Because they came out through the door. Right. Yeah, that's okay. We'll talk about them later. So anyway, Moonbeam has some problems walking, and so she likes to be held and carried around a lot. But, you know, that's okay. She's the alpha hen. She's in charge of the of the pack. So it's really fun watching chickens. You can learn a lot about animal behavior by watching them. Um, and, you know, in times like these, you get sick of being on the TV, or at least I do, and you can come outside, sit down, pat your lap, and you've got two chickens sitting up there on you, just squawking and just loving being with you. So let's talk a little bit about chicken diseases, I guess. Yeah. We can move on. And then how to protect them from all the predators. Because we'll move through. Yeah. Okay. So um, chicken diseases. You know, uh, it's a sad thing because of the way that chickens have been bred to lay eggs. Um, they have an incredibly overused reproductive system. And because of that, they're very prone to reproductive cancers. And unfortunately, that is how I lost a majority of my hens. And so what you'll notice is that um, they'll stop eating as much and they'll start getting a little bit thin. Um, and it's almost nondescript what's really happening for a while. Like at first, you don't even notice it until the point where they're really bad and they start fluffing up, avoiding the rest of the flock, not coming out to eat, things like that. Um, and so, of course, I always take them to the vet because you never really know for sure what's going on. And then oftentimes that's the situation. So you can either care for them until the end of their life or you can have the vet euthanize if they're really not doing well. Um, fortunately, we live in an area where uh, we are really, really close to the Washington State University Avian Health and Food Safety Lab. Um, it's actually like not even a mile away from here. And so they will actually euthanize a bird for you um, for free if they're very ill. You just drop them off and they take them, they euthanize them, and then they do a full necropsy on them. If they're already deceased, you want to put them in a bag and put them in the refrigerator. Never freeze them ever because it'll start changing their tissues and things. So put them in a bag, put them in the refrigerator, get them over to the Avian Health Lab. You can ship them there. You can send them straight to um, Wazoo and Pullman, Washington State University in Pullman. Um, or, or whatever state you're in. Or whatever state you're in. Yeah, they're going to have else. a place for you. And here it's about $40. They do a complete necropsy, which is amazing. It's very technical, and the doctors call you and talk to you about the results um, so you know actually what happened, and then they give you a full written report. And so um, primarily my chickens have passed because of reproductive cancers, unfortunately. Um, I've had a couple that have shown signs of a disease that they thought could have been um, given to them. These are actually birds I got at the hatchery, but could have been um, transmitted to them from the mother actually when they were still in the egg. It's really interesting. Um, I lost one bird to um, fatty liver disease. And this was when I very first had them and I came into the coop and found one dead on the ground and um, took her in for a necropsy. It was the first necropsy we had done. And they said it was because I had fed her too many treats. 
and I had no idea. So, warning to you all, even though it's super fun to give them a ton of great treats like making oatmeal and things like that, chickens love oatmeal and hot cereals. They just lay their beaks in it and when it's cold out, it's wonderful. It's really bad for them. So you wanna feed them um, the appropriate type of diet, um, which there are many of them out there. I prefer an organic one called Scratch and Peck based um, out of a company in Bellingham. It's all non-GMO, organic, no soy, no corn. So corn is something that makes them um, develop into uh, having the fatty liver disease uh, more commonly. Um, and it's not the kind of food that they actually need, even though everybody seems to think that it is. <laughs> but it's really tragic. Basically, their liver gets so much fat in it. And now, why do you even feed them? Why can't they just forage on their own? I mean, they're always eating grass and bugs and slugs they are. and worms. But thanks, thanks to modern medicine, we know that chickens have certain dietary needs uh, that will help them to survive longer and better. And because of that, they're able to formulate the right foods that they need to really help them. And then they'll them. lay more, obviously. Yeah, I mean, they, they would be more healthy, they could lay better. Um, and then of course, whatever you're gonna eat, you're eating basically whatever they've eaten, so you wanna keep it as healthy as possible. And what's the other um, uh, source down in Oregon or whatever? The other there was one college? I used to get that was Half Moon Bay. Oh. Um, there's there's a bunch of different ones, and Scratch and Pack is actually going pretty national now. Yeah. You can order it, but um, just do a little bit of research. I joined a ch couple of chicken groups. There's one called the Chickenistas on Facebook that's fantastic. There's the Crazy House Chicken Ladies and Friends. Of course, I had to join that when I had a blind chicken who came to live in our house with us named Hope. Um, and thanks to the help of some of our staff, Hope actually lived a lot longer than she might have. And uh, she help was a staff? blind chicken. Yeah, yeah. Don't you remember Lexi? Oh. Hi, Lexi again. Um, who laid on the couch with Hoper and oh, yeah, encouraged her to eat. It was so wonderful because that bird was just fantastic. She'd sit in your lap and purr and purr. So much spirit, such a good little friend. Um, such a good stress relaxer. So if you're stressed out, a nice hen is perfect. Like you can see how comfortable Moonbeam is. She would just stay in my arms for hours. It's wonderful. So, so should we do a tour? I can yeah, grab we the can cameras, do a tour. In. So First, I want to tell oh, you about the tour. I have not cleaned this chicken coop, like legit full on cleaned it out since September. So what you're seeing here is the method that I use to not have to go crazy every day. Oh, we'll see how we do it. Do you want to just turn this one off? No, we'll just leave it. Okay. It's not broadcasting. Right. Um, let me show everybody out here this exterior view of the hardware cloth. Now, this is very expensive. We call um, it the fortress. Yeah, the fortress. Now, I, when I had chickens back in the day, when I was just doing things permaculture and for food, um, you know, I obviously lost chickens to predators because they were much more free range. But this hardware cloth right here, this is very expensive, but it keeps the weasels out. If you have one, any kind of weasel species or a mink, or river otter, they will basically come in and take all of your uh, chickens in one night, ripping their heads off and stuff. And so the, that hardware cloth is really important to um, if you really want to make sure your chickens don't. And that has to go about a foot or put it about, about a foot, a and, foot and, a and a half underground, down underground and, and curve it. Put gravel in it so yeah. that if something's digging in, it won't dig through the gravel. And even if it does, it runs into hardware. It gravel. also keeps any rats out, so you're not getting a bunch of uh, rats developing and produ reproducing because you have chickens and chicken food all over the place. Leah Island's watching. All right. I know. Hey, Leah Island. Anyway, come on in. Yeah. So you'll notice that the ground is covered with pine shavings. This is great, and this is what I do. So the chickens will poop. <laughs> this is actually where Moonbeam sleeps right here. And so she'll poop on the ground in the litter, and then I will take my poop bucket. Here it is in all its glory in my tongs. Get good, comfortable <laughs> tongs. I warn you, not uncomfortable. Nice, easy to do ones. And you pick up the poop, the fresh poop, put it in the bucket. And that way, this litter will stay cleaner for a lot longer. And then all you need to do is you just take your rake and you fluff it up. And there's hardly anything in it. So this will last you for months and months and months. It will stay dry and fantastic. And underneath that litter, I have a vinyl floor. It's great. Super easy to clean. So if you look this direction, you'll see I have two trash cans. I don't know if you can see them in here. Uh, metal cans. One of them has their scratch and peck food in it. The other one has their organic pellets. And the reason that I have them in these is so in case we ever got a little rodent in here, it wouldn't be able to get into the food and eat it. Now you might notice this towel above my head right here. That's because some of the chickens, this is actually Carolina's spot, likes to roost up here in the rafters. She's a loner and that's just what she does. And you'll notice this kennel right here. This is where Josephine and Cassiopeia. Speaking of which, nest. where is Carolina? She's all by she's herself. Over, she's somewhere. inside. Oh, yep. Oh. And this is 
announce here, hey, oh, guess what? Hmm. Guess what? Check it out. Oh, got an egg. Yep, let me get it. And so I can tell which chicken laid this egg. I know a couple of you can guess. It's light blue. This chicken, is, or this egg, was laid by um, what's known as an Easter egger. And our little culprit is right down there is Junebug. So you can Easter tell Easter egger, the, what's the official name? It's Easter egg. Oh, I thought it was Americana. So, well, she's, Americana. she's technically an Americana, uh -huh. which, which lays them as well, but most people get Easter eggers. Oh, so okay. anyway, either way. But if you see the chickens with the fluffy cheeks and the beards, like June has, I'll get her for you in a minute. They're going to lay a blue egg. And in fact, you can tell what color eggs some of the other chickens lay based on the colors of their cheeks. Like Moonbeam here, she actually uh, lays brown eggs. Actually, she wants to sit down. There you go, sweetie pie. Um, she lays brown eggs, and Cassiopeia, the white chicken, when you all get her up close and you can see she has blue cheeks, she lays oh, white eggs. There's Caroline out there by herself. Oh, she's okay being out there by herself. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to grab. Oh. Okay, so Cass, the white chicken. Mm -hmm. Cassie. <laughs> all right, so this is Cassie, and I don't know if you can see her cheeks right here are blue. And that tells you that she is a white egg-laying chicken. You have a very dirty beak, my sweetie. That's right. Yes. Now, the CDC will tell you don't kiss your chickens, and you don't have to if you don't want to. I kiss my chickens, but the main thing is don't get poop in your mouth. I so can't you believe you, amateur <laughs> epidemiologist uh, enthusiast, will not do something that the CDC. CDC yeah. I can't help myself. Oh boy. Anyway, um, so what else? And why aren't you wearing your eye pro right now? Um, because I'm not holding them in any position where they could get my okay. eyes. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of ch cleaning out your um, coop, now we've gotten mites a couple of times, right? Yes. And then you have to basically spend yes, an entire day cleaning this whole thing so out. There's a northern fowl mite, which is what we had the last time. And those are mites that only live on the chicken. And then I'm trying to think what the other one's called. Like a red mite. Anyway, what they'll do is they'll climb onto the birds at night and then feed on the birds and then they'll climb off and they'll live in the wood all around them and all the, the parts of the coop. Um, so if you have the mite that lives in the wood, doesn't live on them at night, then you have to pull everything out of the coop and clean everything and treat it and it just takes all day. It's a real pain. Um, and if you have the northern fowl mite that lives on them all the time, then you treat the bird themselves and then you don't have to worry about everything else. Although if I ever have mites, I clean everything anyway. But yeah, last time we had the northern fowl mite and I had a real problem getting rid of them. And what I found out from my vet, and this is different from bird to bird based on if your bird has any um, previous physical issues or is on a certain medication or whatever, but you can spray them with, um, uh, why am I spacing on what it's called? Not revolution, not advanced, frontline. Frontline spray for cats and dogs, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I have to look it up. Anyway, one spray under the wing, one spray under the rump, um, two weeks apart, and my mites were gone. It was. <laughs> Awesome. It was way easier than anything I've ever done. So anyway, um, with my chickens, I use towels in the places that they like to roost because it's more comfortable for them. And if they go to the bathroom on them, I just launder them. It's no big deal, and it's a lot um, saves a lot of. Um, yeah, I guess money, everybody can really. learn that right now, and not have to go to the store so often. They yes, just any yes. If you run out of toilet paper, just use a towel. It really cleans mm -hmm. in the washing and then, machine. It's great. Well, yeah, and you can um, actually pre-wash it to get the big stuff off if you use it for number two. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> in a special sink. So anyway, oh, the other thing the chickens need—they need, they need <laughs> grit, grit to um, help grind up their food. Um, the grit they swallow and it stays in their crop, and that's the. Um, uh, not in their crop, in their gizzard, and it helps grind up all their, their grains and things. And oyster shells. So you got to make sure that your laying hens have enough calcium. Because if you don't, then they won't have... So they it can draw the calcium out of their bones to make a nice, hard eggshell. And you don't want to do that. You want to make sure they have enough um, dietary calcium that they can create really strong shells. Because if they aren't strong, that means there's a problem. They could break inside of them, all sorts of bad things. So Should we go for a go. tour down in there? Yeah, um, I, I hate to have them. I mean, I guess a little oh, she's fine. I close everything. And oh, duck your head because this thing hit us several times. <laughs> All right. Alrighty. What else do you have going? I mean, how, how's this organized out here? Okay. Um, should the, yeah, I'll go the really important make sure that your chickens always have fresh water. Some people think, oh, I put it in there. It should last a week. No big deal. It's got a little bit of dirt, a little bit of whatever in there. No. 
make them make sure that you give them fresh water. Um, they need it Every all the time. Every morning? Or? If you can, ideally. Mm -hmm. If it's really cold out and their water's not gross, I suppose you could go two days, but it's always better. I mean, think about it. If you had water that was sitting outside and dirt kicked in it, do you want it the next day? No. That is your chickens. Um, my so chicken, back I had 20... How many? Six chickens? We had 25. Okay. Well, we got rid of one. So, or we oh, rehomed the one rooster. we rehomed the one rooster yeah, we so didn't we know was a rooster. So we only had you know. 20. So we only had one left. Four. Well, so we had a lot of space where if we couldn't let them free range because we were going to be gone for a while or something, then we built this extra space again with full hardware cloth. And then, um, let's see, the region had a ton of bats about three and four years ago. And so we obviously kept every all the rats out of here and everything, made sure that we weren't causing any extra reproduction. And then weasels moved into the area big time, uh, exploded, and rats in the entire region in okay, in about two or three months, it seemed like. Short tail weasels, and so Kim was like, We can never let them um, free range out in the garden anymore, you know, make sure that the, ra the weasels don't get them during the day. And so Kim made me build, and I think Leila, if you're watching still, and maybe Lexi and Charlie, when summer maybe, uh, made me build this big long extension of hardware cloth. And that was fine with me because we had, uh, Kim had already long years prior decided that they were all pets. And so we were just going to spend as much money as we would on a pet on him anyway. Hey, Carol, why are you off there by yourself? Oh, she is so gorgeous, though, isn't she? Oh, yep. Anyways, okay, let's see if I can shoo Sherry back in. There she goes. There she goes. Get okay. back with your other chickens. Oh, so here's another here comes one for June. You. This is June. This is the one who laid the, the blue egg. So if you look at June, you'll see she's got those really fluffy cheeks and that really fluffy beard. And so that tells you of a breed that could lay those. The, oh, you're so muddy. See, this bathrobe comes in so handy. Um, I don't know what I missed, but... <laughs> oh, nothing. I was just talking about this extension that we built. And everything. So you could research for just weeks and weeks and weeks and not learn everything there is to learn about chickens. Mm -hmm. um, but should we think about fish, finishing up or what have we forgotten? I guess so. I mean, there's for a quick a intro. We could talk about. Well, if there were, um, if there uh, later, if not now, if there are some bunch of wolf campers watching this, um, <laughs> Jack wants a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Jack wants a chicken. Yeah. Uh, anything that you want to say to the wolf campers, if they ever watch, if they watch this later? Oh, um, well, we really can't wait to see you guys again. I know. Yeah. Well, let me set this up and then see if I can sing this song now. I've never played it before, <laughs> and so, um, we'll see if I can get it going. Is there anybody that looks like they put a comment or anything on there, Kimmer? Oh, who put that? Lexi. Oh, mm -hmm. thanks, Lexi. Yeah. Uh, yep, we miss Mr. Sunshine, that's for sure. And by the way, Mr. Sunshine was named as such long before we even knew. Well, his name was Sunshine. So it yeah. was Sunshine and Moonbeam together. And then it turned out to be a, a boy. So, yeah, Mr. Sunshine. All right. Now um, Kim wants to be in the uh, well, get video Joseph with her <laughs> cuddliest chicken for this song, I believe. And so, this is by Randy Newman. You've got a friend in me. And uh, it's the first time I've ever tried playing it. It's Literally. such a great yeah. song. So after you tr hear me, <laughs> go listen to the original. And what what was the movie that made it really fun, famous recently? Toy Story? Toy Story? Toy Story, yep. Yes, but of course I saw it on a video with someone holding a turkey. Oh my goodness, look at all these great chicken bugs right oh, here. Why don't you pick them up and show them? Oh my the gosh, I wish we could. I don't know if I can get them all. Oh yeah, grab a couple. It was underneath this bucket, and so that's. Chickens love finding here. bugs. They are not vegetarians. I'm sorry to do this. Crane fly. <laughs> they are big predators. Gone. Oh, okay, that was a potato bug. <laughs> Everybody remember, keep your spirits up by going outside as much as you can, and um, 
plant a garden if you can. If you have no place to plant it, just plant it in pots or even in bags. Uh, plastic bags, you can put soil in there. And you can get soil underneath your uh, lawn. Just like dig out the sod and try to find some soil under there in some not too polluted spot. And okay. remember, if you're gonna buy chickens, plan to have them for years and years and years and love them and enjoy them. They're just amazing little friends. Yep. And friends don't eat friends. And if you enjoyed this video, please click on the donate button on, uh, on in the text. And um, that'll help our staff stay employed during the springtime. That's challenging for everyone. That's only if you have time and income, st I mean, excuse me, money and income at this time as well. Uh, and if you have time, see if you can get out there and help um, people that are battling this disease on yes. the front lines. All right. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. When the road looks, looks ahead. And your miles. And the warm, and your miles. It got wet. I can't see it. Miles, miles and miles from the warm, warm nice. bed. Just remember what your old pal said. Oh, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. If you got trouble, well, I got it too. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow.